Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're continuing our deep nostalgia fueled dive into Halo Combat Evolved lore by taking a look at all the lore for every single UNSC weapon and vehicle this comfy masterpiece has to offer. Now, the original plan was to do all of the human and covenant weapons and vehicles in this one video, but I think, as you can imagine, that video just ended up being, like, far too long, like, double the length of my longest video, so instead, I decided to split it into two separate videos, with the covenant one coming in a few days. I mean, now that I've finished Doom and I'm officially living in a literal quarantine zone, I've got nothing better to be doing. But despite that, this is still going to be a really long video, so let's keep the intro short and sweet. If you do enjoy at any point, then a like, a comment telling me your favourite CE UNSC weapon, and also subscribing if you haven't done so yet go a really long way in helping your boy out. So, let part one of the mid-lockdown mega lore video commence. So, starting off today, we have arguably the most iconic weapon in, I'd say not only Halo history, but quite possibly first-person shooter history. I mean, top three at the very least. The Halo Combat Evolved Magnum. The Magnum, also known as the M6D, or colloquially named the God Pistol, is the standard issue sidearm for the crew of the Pillar of Autumn. Designed by Miseria Armory on Mars, it's a recoil-operated, magazine-fed handgun, chambered for 12.7 by 40mm rounds and upsized for use by Spartan 2s. The magazines, however, are universal between both the larger Spartan version of the pistol and the smaller standard-issue Navy version of the pistol, and typically come loaded with 12 12.7 by 40mm semi-armor-piercing high-explosive rounds. The standard issue M6D comes with both rear and forward iron sights, whereas the Spartan version, the upscaled version, comes instead with a KFA 2x Smart Link capable scope, replacing the forward iron sights. This scope can connect directly to a Spartan's Mjolnir heads up display and also a marine eyepiece. One of the most unique traits of this sidearm, however, is its fully automatic capability. This, combined with its extremely heavy rounds, make it ultra-effective on the battlefield, against targets of all strength, shielding, and size. Not even vehicles are safe from this monster. There's no wonder it has such a legendary status amongst the Navy's finest. The MA-5B Assault Rifle is the standard-issue rifle for those serving on the Pillar of Autumn, and for very good reason. Designed, once again, by Miseria, something you're going to hear a lot during this video, the MA-5B is a gas-operated, magazine-fed, 7.62x51mm AP 900 rounds per minute monster. And on top of this, some operators have even been known to chamber it in 7.62 hollow points as well. Now, with an RPM that high, a magazine capacity of 60 rounds, and chambered in the same size round as a modern-day Scar H, FAL, or even a World War II-era BAR or Russian SVT-40, this rifle is perfectly suited for assault, suppression, and spraying down hordes of aliens. And all you have to do is pull the trigger. This extreme fire rate does come at the cost of bullet spread, however, which means that medium to longer range engagements do become more difficult in full auto. That said though, if the operator is to fire in bursts, then this spread becomes far more controllable, and once again, the MA5B becomes the beast it was designed to be. When it comes to user comfort, well, this rifle excels in that as well. It comes with an integrated computer hooked up to a screen that displays the number of rounds left in the magazine and also a magnetic compass, with its north set towards threshold. The MA-5B is the complete package, a jack of all trades and a master of almost every one. Now go buy one. Heck, buy two. That's, That's an order, soldier. soldier. The M9 Fragmentation Grenade, developed by Misria, is the standard issue grenade for not just the Navy, but the entire UNSC. It's classified as high explosive and also dual purpose, meaning it's effective against both infantry and light vehicles, which does exclude tanks and any form of heavy armour. Contained within the hard metal casing, designed to splinter easily under high pressure and to allow the grenade to roll and bounce off walls, is a charge of COML an explosive mixture used commonly by the UNSC. 
When the priming button on the handle is pressed, the charge is primed and the grenade ultimately explodes, fragmenting the metal casing and sending shards of shrapnel flying in all directions. And then, if the monumental blast of the grenade isn't enough to send the Covenant flying, quite literally, then the shrapnel should be a good last resort. Those poor grunts had no idea what was coming. The M90 Close Assault Weapon System, shotgun, was developed by Weapon System Technologies based on Misria's highly prevalent M45 model. The M90 was the standard issue shotgun for the UNSC during the war. The M90 is a pump action firearm that's fed via a non-detachable dual tubular magazine in which 12 shells can be stored and are fed into the barrel with every pump. Now, typically, these shells are 8-gauge, Soulcraft 8-gauge Magnum shells, to be precise, which feed most of WST's shotguns, and for very good reason. Not only do these shells fire 15 individual tungsten, lead, or steel pellets at an extremely high power thanks to the extra powder packed into the Magnum shells, but they also have an unusually large effective range, often even matching that of the MA5B, although with a slightly larger spread. Although technically it's classified as a close assault weapon system, the M90 is a lethal pump action at almost any range. No wonder it's a favourite of the entire UNSC. The SRS 99C S2 AM sniper rifle, developed by You Know Who, is an absolute monster of a rifle. Chambered in 14.5 by 114 mm rounds, this gas-operated semi-automatic anti-material sniper rifle is a true force to be reckoned with. Loaded with magazines of four rounds, typically containing 14.5 by 114 mm armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding sabot rounds, no foe, flesh or metal is safe from the SRS 99C. So much so that the UNSC had to issue a warning to all operators who take this out into the field that the rounds it fires often overpenetrate several armored soldiers. So be sure of what's on the other side of your target before pulling the trigger. When a rifle is so powerful, the military have to literally issue a warning to anybody using it, you know you're dealing with an absolute beast. To go with its immense power, it also comes with a telescopic scope, offering 2x and 10x magnification options, complementing its effective range of 2,300 meters. Also, a sturdy bipod and even a carry handle, which, to be fair, given its almost 187 centimeter long barrel and just overall massive build size, makes sense. The only target the SRS-99 isn't lethal against is the Flood, seeing as the rounds are so powerful and overpenetrate so much, they tend to just go straight through them as opposed to causing them massive widespread damage across their entire bodies, hence why shotguns are so useful and single shot things like a sniper rifle aren't. So, before we continue our look into the UNSC's mighty arsenal, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Want to experience the sound of all of these ultra-iconic firearms and vehicles in the best quality possible? Then look no further than the Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds. Starting at half the price of other premium wireless earbuds while sounding just as great, they really are the best way to just vibe and listen to some flood soundtracks, which is, you know, quite fitting given the current state of the world. Just go to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia to get 15% off your first order. The link is also in the description. Do you want to just vibe to flood music as we edge ever closer to the firing of the Halo Array? Do you want to just let the chilled ambience and atmosphere of Halo CE flow over you like a, a flood of hardcore nostalgic ASMR? Then the six hours of playtime, seamless wireless Bluetooth pairing, and comfy, ultra-noise-isolating fit of the everyday E25 earbuds make them the earbud for you. So again, if you want to embrace the current state of the world just like everyone's favourite ancient parasite, then go to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia, or click the link at the top of the description to get 15% off your first order. As a wise man once said, these are trying times for all of us, so thank you to Raycon for sponsoring the video. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. The M41 Surface to Surface Rocket Launcher, Spanker, is the standard issue heavy ordnance weapon used by the UNSC, 
and is developed by Misria Armory. The Spanker is an iconic weapon, partly due to its name, partly due to its efficiency as a man-portable shoulder-fired rocket launcher, and partly due to its iconic and also unique design. The launcher features two primary components, the launcher itself with a body, a handle, a shoulder rest and the magwell, and the magazine. Each magazine contains two M19 102mm surface to surface missiles, with one missile cycled into place, ready for firing as the other is fired, which allows the weapon to be tactically reloaded without wasting a payload. And speaking of reloads, the unique tubular magazine design makes reloads as quick and easy as they can possibly be, which is extremely useful on the front lines of battle, with easy detachment and subsequently attachment of a new magazine. These missiles are also extremely high explosive, suited for combat against infantry, light and heavy, and also vehicles, both light and heavy as well. And then, within the body of the M41 is a fairly conventional targeting system with a smart link scope, which is capable of up to two times magnification, suitable for both long-range bombardments and also for clearing out dug-in hostiles at a distance. There really is nothing, no target nor foe, that's safe from the Spanker. The M7057 Flamethrower is my favourite weapon in Halo CE. In fact, it's quite possibly my favourite Halo weapon full stop, and it's one that I sincerely hope 343 bring back in Halo Infinite, especially in the Combat Evolved iteration. My god, a man can dream. But anyways, that's another topic for another day. The M7057, developed by Misria, is a defoliant projector, which spits and then ignites a stream of volatile, semi-liquid adhesive, creating a napalm-like flame that engulfs anything it touches. Now just a quick FYI for you guys, the flamethrower was only ever in the PC version of Combat Evolved, and so was never in the campaign, it had to be modded into the campaign. So huge thank you to General Kid for getting me the CE map files with a functioning flamethrower in campaign. But as you can see, <laughs> there's an issue, it's not quite 100% functioning, there's no view model, which sucks but I can't really do much about that sadly. I just got some campaign footage to show you guys its damage, and boy does it do damage, we'll get to why in a minute. The flamethrower is loaded with canisters of pyrocene 5, the chemical that's ignited, and features 100 fuel units per canister, which is plenty to devastate a horde of Covenant or Flood. As you can see, ignited pyrocene more than does the trick. As soon as a contact, no matter their biological makeup, comes into contact with the adhesive, the flame burns right through their shields, their armor, and their flesh, killing them in a matter of seconds. Its extreme lethality makes it not only perfect for combat, but also suppression, clearing out enemy encampments, and more importantly, psychological intimidation. An effect which is only enhanced by the massive 13.4 meter effective range. For ease of use, it also comes with a small digital screen displaying the amount of fuel left in a canister, and below that, a safety switch, which is presumably there to stop the fuel canisters leaking fuel when the gun isn't being used. However, because of the nature of this weapon, the barrel and the mechanisms inside it are prone to overheating, something which is also indicated on the onboard display. That said though, after a few short seconds of cooling down, this monster of a weapon is ready to spit pyrocene and ignite the flames once again. Right, now for the UNSC vehicles, starting off with easily, easily the most iconic of all. The M12 Light Reconnaissance Vehicle, aka the Warthog, designed and produced by AMG Transport Dynamics. Capable of seating three soldiers, this all-terrain four-wheel drive LRV is fast, maneuverable, and efficient in all environments. It's powered by a low-profile, liquid-cooled hydrogen-injected engine, a much more efficient form of fuel than humanity's previous fixation with fossil fuels, and also comes with tow ropes on the off chance it needs to drag something, or someone, out of a sticky situation. But the real deal-breaker here is the rear-mounted turret, of which there are actually two variants. Firstly, the M41 Vulcan Light Anti-Aircraft Gun, a three-barrel rotary gun powered by electricity and firing 12.7 by 99mm AP rounds, linkless and drum-fed, at a maximum of 550 rounds per minute. 
On top of this immense firepower, the turret also offers total 360 degree rotation at roughly 100 degrees per second, and also an elevation of 60 degrees. Perfect for fulfilling its role as an AA turret. And furthermore, the extremely efficient recoil compensation makes firing it an extremely smooth procedure, but at the same time negatively impacts its long-range accuracy. And secondly, a rarer sight, the M12A1 Rocket Hog. Exactly the same in overall design, bar two things. The black paint with yellow racing stripe and the aforementioned different turret an M39 rocket turret, which fires three M19 shaped charge high explosive missiles before a reload, making it the perfect anti-armor warthog. There are also two other warthog variants which, although never seen in Combat Evolve because they were cut from the game, are canon. Firstly, the M868 Tropic Warthog, a standard M12 repainted with a jungle camo, a double application, in fact, to prevent corrosion of the paint in harsher environments, and also a more rugged suspension for, well, jungle-based combat. And secondly, the M862 Arctic Warthog, a highly modified M12 for use in Arctic warfare, and as such features an enclosed cabin with butterfly doors and quad tracks, allowing for efficient traversal of deep snow and ice at all altitudes and inclines. Our final land vehicle is one that needs no introduction the M808B Scorpion main battle tank. Weighing in at a whopping 66 tons, this absolute monster of a vehicle features ceramic titanium armor plating, an enormous M512 90mm smoothbore high velocity main cannon, and an M231 coaxial machine gun, with seats on all of the tracks for up to four passengers who can supplement this heavy ordnance with small arms fire. The main cannon fires 90mm tungsten rounds, which are fed via an autoloader, capable of destroying any heavy armour with ease. And then, for when the autoloader's doing its work, the coaxial machine gun is there to fill in the void of silence with a slew of 7.62 AP rounds. This is the last thing you want to see rolling over the hill to your encampment. For our first and technically only air vehicle, we have one of the most iconic of all time, the D-77 TC Pelican. Designed by Mislia, the Pelican is a troop carrier dropship powered by four hybrid fusion drives and a gravitic assist generator to aid in hovering for evacs or rearmaments. The cargo bay holds 10 seats, which is enough for a platoon of Leathernecks, and comes stocked with first aid kits mounted either side of the door to the cockpit. Inside the cockpit, besides the usual features required for flying, there's a motion tracker which is not too dissimilar from the Mjolnir's, and a typical radar system. There are also switches to activate various countermeasures, including, but not limited to, flares, microdrone decoys, directional jammers, and rainbow laser jammers. As for armament, although we don't see it in use during Combat Evolved, there is technically a nose-mounted M370 autocannon, firing 70mm depleted uranium rounds, the aiming of which is directly tied to the movements of the pilot's head, allowing for easy target acquisition and engagement, something made possible by the unique helmets the pilots wear, which are complete with smart visors. Mounted on either wing is an Anvil 2 ASM missile pod, each capable of launching eight missiles, something, again, not seen in Combat Evolve, but it's technically there. The tail of the Pelican is typically used for supply drop-offs, notably vehicles. Although we only ever see it carrying a Warthog in Combat Evolved, again, technically it can carry anything up to a Scorpion tank, weighing in at 66 tons, so this bad boy can transport pretty much anything at once and still fly reliably. This mark of aviation genius has been a sight for many sore eyes on Alpha Halo. One of the defining traits of the Pelican, in fact, no matter the model or variant, and no matter the battle. The penultimate vehicle for today is, in fact, my favourite Halo vehicle of all time. You know, CE really just did things best. The C709 Longsword. Developed by Misria once again, the C709 is a much larger version of the standard GATL1 longsword, the UNSC's main starfighter and interceptor. Considering it fills such a vital role in a fleet, 
It comes outfitted with a whole array of arms. On the nose is a 110mm rotary cannon, used mainly in dogfights. On its underside are two 120mm ventral guns with 90 degree swivel angles and then four ASGM-10 missile pods are fitted, likely on the underside of the wings, to also aid in dogfights. And then on top of all of that, a space mine dispenser can also be attached as an optional extra. Moving into the interior, it is divided into two levels. The upper level, which contains the cockpit, a cryo bay, a weapons locker, and various navigation systems, and the lower level, which holds the retractable ramp. As for utility, it comes with an entire suite of active and passive sensors, which are used for target detection, signal jamming, and if equipped with an AI, even the remote control of other spacecraft. A massive, all-purpose and beautiful looking spacecraft. The Longsword is unmatched when it comes to its user efficiency, comfort and utility. And even more so, lethality. And finally, for the UNSC weapons and vehicles, we have the one and only Pillar of Autumn. As a Halcyon-class cruiser, developed by the Reyes McLee Shipyards, the Autumn is one of the smallest ships in the entire UNSU fleet, and yet it still packs a mighty punch. It comes with a Mark II light coil Mac gun, spanning two-thirds the length of the entire ship, able to fire three lighter projectiles, but each with a similar trait to a conventional hollow point, before requiring a charge reload. 32 M58 Archer missile pods, 18 M910 point defense guns, 8 Mark 33 Spitfire naval coil gun batteries, and 6 M66 Sentry autocannons line the outer hull of the ship, along with 4 Shiva class nuclear missiles, 3 of which can be fired by the ship, and 1 is loaded on a remote controlled longsword. These are all capable of fulfilling either a defensive or offensive role. The hull itself is created from a titanium A battle plate, which comes in at 2 meters thick, and in total, the ship weighs 9 million metric tons. This behemoth of a ship is powered by a set of nuclear fusion engines, and also contains one of the revolutionary Shaw Fujikawa faster than light drives, allowing for slip space travel. At the helm of the Autumn is the one and only Captain Jacob Keyes, who was assigned command of the ship in roughly late July 2552, around two months prior to the events of Alpha Halo, following his victory in the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV. He commands a crew of over 1,000 naval personnel, 800 marines, 400 ODSTs, and a Spartan, rumoured to be the last of his kind. Not only does the Autumn carry extremely precious cargo, but its newest destination is one that will change the course of human history. And so, that does it. The UNSC's entire arsenal at Alpha Halo. If you're watching this video after I've released part two, the Covenant part, then just click that little eye in the top right hand corner of the video and you'll go straight to it. And if you're watching this before, then firstly, thank you. And secondly, just, just give me a few days and the Covenant part should be up. So if you enjoyed, don't forget that a like, subscribing if you're new or you haven't yet, and also leaving a comment telling me your favourite weapon or vehicle really does go a long way to help. Also, thank you to Raycon once again for sponsoring this video. And that's all for today. I want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons for the continued support, especially during complete global catastrophes like the one that we're currently going through. And thank you all so much for watching. Again, it really is appreciated. Stay safe. Stay isolated. I feel like the newsreader from Shot of the Ted saying that. The attackers can be stopped by removing the head or destroying the brain. I'll repeat that by removing the head or destroying the brain. Yeah, anyway, stay safe, stay isolated, and I'll catch you all in the next one.